Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna to walk you through the meal that we typically make right after we harvest a deer. So recently, a buddy of mine, Danny, at TND Outdoors, uh, he shot a deer, and we've always talked about how we use the heart to make deer heart tacos right after we kill a deer. And he made a video, and he, he asked me to make one so we can compare the two to see how, how different they are. Actually, his video is very, very similar to the way that we always do ours. But just to kind of walk through what we're going to do here today, uh, and my kids always ask for this. This evening, it's just my son and I that are going to be eating this. My daughter always eats it with us, but she's going with my wife to a Christmas party this afternoon or this evening. So it's just us. But anyway, obviously, if you're going to have heart tacos, you've got to start with a heart. So this is the heart from the buck that my son killed the other day. This is just an average size heart. That deer was probably a two and a half year old buck. Um, obviously, if you shoot a, year, a smaller deer, a yearling or fawn, the heart's gonna be a lot smaller. Um, and then if you get an older, you know, three and a half, four and a half, five and a half year old deer, you're gonna have a bigger heart. So we're gonna have heart. But when we do that, we also utilize the tongue. So beef tongue, buffalo tongue was always a big thing for the Indians. Beef tongue is very common for people to eat. Deer tongue is one of those things when you tell people you eat deer tongue, they go, oh, that's disgusting. It's no different than beef tongue. And if every time we go to a taqueria or a true Mexican restaurant, they always have tongue on the menu. And we always order tongue tacos, and they're fantastic. So we're going to utilize the deer tongue. And just to add a little bit of additional splash of flavor to this, um, we saved the liver as well. I actually have the kidneys, uh, or one of the kidneys laying over here that we do different things with that as well. But we also use the liver. So here's the liver. Um, it's totally intact. When Trey shot this buck, uh, he did a really good double lung shot, blew it up, uh, did some damage to both shoulders a little bit, but the heart was intact, liver's intact, all that is good to go. And I'm going to use just a little bit of the liver because deer liver is really strong. And um, if, I, if I use too much deer liver, it tends to act kind of as a binder whenever I'm cooking this. And it thickens everything up a little bit more than I like. And it has a really strong livery taste, which, you know, it is what it is. I like liver, but I can only eat it in moderation because it does get a little bit overpowering at times. Anyway... We're gonna start prepping. First of all, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get this tongue ready. And the first step for the tongue is you gotta boil it because there is, a, there is a skin or a thick layer here on the outer uh, surface of the tongue. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a small pot, fill it up with water, and I'm gonna boil this tongue for 30 minutes. Then I'm gonna turn it off and let it cool, and then I'll come back and I'll show you the next steps with the tongue. While the tongue is boiling though, I'm gonna start preparing this heart. Okay, everybody, so here's the heart. What we're going to do to start with is we're going to cut away the, I say, less than desirable parts of it. So what I do to start with, if you see here at the top of it, you got all your muscles and connection points up here. You're not going to want to eat really any of that. So what I do is basically is I just take a sharp knife and I cap it. So I cut the whole top off right there. And if you look inside of it from here, you'll see, you can see all that stuff right there. That's really tough. This fleshy part right here. That's what we're trying to get to, but this has got so much of the other stuff around it that we're not gonna mess with it. What I do next then, and everybody's different. Some people just take the heart, if you're not doing tacos, some people just take the heart like this and they slice it into thin steaks and they cook the steaks whole. So you can do it that way. Um, what I tend to do is I just kind of start cutting small sections off and then I'll go through and I'll start working each section up. So if you look at this, all this white here, this is kind of a fat layer. So I go through and I just slowly cut that off. This will become dog treat in a minute. That's why the dog's over here whining. She knows what's about to happen. So then I go through and you can, if you look here, this is kind of the inside of one of the, I don't know if you call them ventricles or chambers inside the heart. That's okay. There's nothing wrong with that piece right there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to start cutting it into small pieces that would be kind of bite size. You know, I'll make this a little bit smaller. And I'll go back and I'll start cutting it into small chunks. Which in here in a minute, you'll see we're going to season it. And then we're going to saute all this. And we're going to serve it on the taco. But what I'm going to get to here is toward the middle here. I'll show you that. And this is just slightly discolored. 
from the rest of it because we had this soaking in water the past few days just to pull all the blood out of it and that's the only reason that's discolored is this was in really shallow water this other side here was submerged fully in water that's why there's a difference in coloration there but so i'm just going to go there and cut another slice off and hopefully i'm getting close to it there's some hard stuff right there that i'm trying to cut through man that is not coming off see that's what you're going to run into in here eventually when i'm trying to show you You've got some hard muscle area in here. All right, so what you're seeing here now, this is as you work your way toward the center of the heart, you're gonna see these, what they, I don't know if that's what they really are. I've always called them heart strings. I mean, you hear people always say, oh, they're tugging on your heart strings. I don't know. I don't know if that, I don't know if that's really what they're called or not, or if that's just a figure of speech. But uh, anyway, so what you got here is as you work through this, you're gonna get into some of these heart string pieces. And you don't really want to eat them. They're, they're not really very desirable. So if you just slowly sliver those off, you end up with a big chunk of the muscle right there. Same thing as what we did before. I'm going to take that. And I'm going to dice it up into small pieces. And a really good sharp knife helps. I just sharpened this knife before this video. So, uh, But anyway, so here's the heart with the heart strings. I'm just going to run through here. And I'm just going to slowly cut those away. And see, it just pulls right away. I hope you can see that okay on the video. My cameraman has walked away. So once again, there's just a wad of the heart strings and the tough stuff, and that's just another chunk of meat right there. So I'm gonna dice this up, and I'm gonna put it over here in the cook pile. Okay, so I finished dicing up the heart there now, and you can see, I mean, that's a pretty sizable chunk of meat. That's a pretty good pile of meat that came off that heart. So the heart is done and ready. Uh, we'll season it whenever we put it in the skillet. The tongue is starting to boil now, so we're going to give it, it's roughly, like I said, I usually do 20 to 30 minutes. I'll look at the tongue, see how it's doing, pick it up, feel the tech. I mean, it's got to cool a little bit before I can pick it up because it is very hot at that point, but 20 to 30 minutes is all it takes to do the tongue. So that's actually a piece of junk I got to throw away. I scraped that in the wrong pile. Anyway, all right, now I'm going to get this liver over here and I'm going to cut just a little bit of liver off and dice it up real small and then uh, we'll be right back with you. Okay, so here's just a small chunk of liver. The liver is much, much, much larger than this, but this was just a small piece hanging off the side and I was able to just cut it off real easily. So I'm gonna do the same sort of thing with the liver and you'll see, I mean, it is, it is very dark when you look at it here. I mean, it is super high in iron and you look at the difference in coloration there. Um, strong flavor, it's always gonna have a little bit of like blood retention in it even after I've soaked this thing for how many days now, Trey? Four? This is about yeah. fourth day of soaking now. I'm just gonna go through and dice it up small just like I did the heart, and then we'll come back and we'll catch up with you here in a minute and show you how we keep going with this. All right, so we've got the heart cut up and ready. We've got the small amount of liver cut up and ready. We're gonna take the rest of this liver and we're probably gonna vacuum pack it and save it for later, unless my son wants to try some uh, sauteed liver and onion. That's another common way people use liver, whether it be beef liver, deer liver, is they just saute it in a skillet with butter and sauteed onions. And, you know, that's kind of, I guess you're, you're using the strong flavor of the onion and to try to overpower the liver in that case because it is a big, strong, uh, powerful dish. But anyway, here's what we got so far. So here's the cutting board. You got the pile of heart right here, the little bit of liver. Like I said, I'm not gonna go heavy with the liver tonight. Uh, we don't need a huge amount of food since my daughter's not here and my wife's not here. But then when the tongue is done, it's boiling, it's still gonna have probably another 15 minutes on it. We're gonna take it out, we're gonna skin that up. I'm gonna dice it up the same way I did this. I'll show you that whenever we get to it. And then we're gonna ready to start cooking and we'll plate it up and eat, so. All right, so we've taken the tongue out of the pot now of the boiling water, so if you take a look at this here, try to just focus on that tongue. It's still steaming a little bit. I don't know if you can see that or not. You focused on the tongue. Mm -hmm. See how it's turned that white color now? Whereas earlier, it was all just a pinkish color. So all this white is going to peel away. So I'm going to bring this back over. Oh, I pulled it too low. Okay. So all this white is just going to flake off. It... It may have to cool down before it'll do it. Sometimes it's a little bit tricky about getting it off depending on temperature and how long you boil it and different things. 
Sometimes uh, in the past I've had to use a knife and I've just shaved the, the layer of meat or the layer of skin off there with a knife. Um, the last one we did, whenever I killed my buck a couple weeks ago, it just peeled right off by, I mean, it just, it's like you're peeling an orange. Um, you just never know what you're going to get. And I haven't figured out yet why sometimes it works differently than others. One other thing I'm thinking about trying is I'm, I'm debating on getting a potato peeler out and trying to just run a potato peeler down it and see how that works. So I may give that a try tonight and I'll get back to you. But anyway, that's what it's going to look like. I'm going to get this peeled real quick and I'll let you know how it, see right there it is. Okay. So like if you just grab it on the top, See, it starts to bubble up here. You can see the bubble just shot water across the kitchen. So this right here is all just going to peel right off. And that's all I'm going to do is I'm just going to peel this white layer off. And then I'll come back to you in a minute and I'll show you what it looks like after I get that done. All right, so that came clean a lot faster. I used the potato peeler to give it a try. I'd never done that before. And that worked really good for this top section here. Kind of like, you know, because it's got a rounded outside edge where you can get the potato peeler right up on it. Down here on the sides, coming closer, down here on the sides, it was it was not so easy because it was kind of a concave shape and the potato peeler didn't really go in there very well. So I just had to use the knife and slowly sliver away uh, what was in there. So got all the outer skin layer off here, this, the, the tough layer that had bubbled up on there. Now I'm going to go through this, this bottom section right here. Normally it's too tough to eat, so I actually cut this bottom section here I cut this off and then I'm left with basically just like that shape of the tongue I'll chop that up I'll mix it in with the pile and then we'll season it and we'll get started cooking so I'll be right back let's start getting the dicing on that so same sort of thing I just cut everything into small bite-sized pieces so you saw how easily that cut right through there same sort of thing I'm just cutting it up into small chunks I'm gonna mix it over here in the pile. I took the liver away because liver, like I said, liver retains a lot of blood in it and it was bleeding all over this cutting board and kind of making a mess. So I just took it, I put it in a bowl and set it over here beside the stove so that it'll be ready for me to throw in here in a little bit. All right, all right so we're over here at the stove now and I've got all my meats here on the cutting board here in front of me. I'm gonna smash and chop a garlic clove and I've got a small red onion here. I mean, you could probably call it a shallot. This was supposed to be red onion that we grew here, um, but it, it never really it never really bulbed the way it was supposed to. We always grow our own onions, and we always get great big bulbs, but for whatever reason, this variety of red onion we planted this year did not. Anyway, it still tastes good. It's a little strong flavored, but I'm going to just chop these up. I'm going to saute the garlic and the onion in the hot oil to start with, and then I'm going to throw in the meat, and I'm going to season it. And for seasoning today, I'm using the Reload Rub Fully Loaded. Uh, this is their original blend, basically. So I'm going to use this. It's got a combination of really good spices and flavors in it. So uh, I'm going to hit it with this and uh, cook it down, and then we'll plate it up. So let's get started with all that. garlic. You smell that? Nope. You don't smell that? No. I do not smell that. All right, you can build your taco however you want. Trey and I like soft shell tacos, soft shell flour. You can use corn or hard shell or whatever, but just take the meat. Trey does his opposite of mine. He puts the cheese on first, but 
if we had fresh cilantro out of the garden, then we would have just done cilantro and onion. But we didn't have any, so we're going to kind of do it somewhat American style, if you want to call it that. So it's basically just the meat. Pile a little bit of cheese on it there. You can put whatever toppings you like on it. And then we've got this Herdez uh, avocado hot sauce. It's really good. It's kind of like a spicy guacamole almost. And uh, just kind of pour that stuff on there. And then let's go dig into this thing. All right, got my first taco built. Trey's already finished his in the time that I've got mine built. So, Trey, you liked it? No. No? Okay. Well, he's already finished Give it, so that. he must be choking it down. Anyway, got my taco built. I've got my orange crush soda. Mmm. Oh, man. That's good, too. All right. Let's dig in and see what it's like. Mmm. Oh, my. You've got the iron, real deep, earthy flavor of the liver, a little bit. You've got the slight chewiness of the tongue, which is very mild flavor too. And then the, man, that heart, it doesn't have a lot of flavor to it, but it's very, very tender. Mm. Once again, this is probably the first thing we make whenever we kill a deer. This is what the kids ask for first. They love it. I love it. This is what we do. Anyway, give it a try if you've never eaten deer heart. This is the easiest way to do it, in my opinion, anyway. Hope you enjoy it. Drop a comment below. Let me know if you've eaten deer heart. If you do it a different way, if you give it a try and decide you like it, let me know. Have a good day. I hope that you just go in. Also, hit that like. Hit the subscribe button. I really appreciate it. And just have a good day. God bless.